you might have seen incredible videos like this showing saw stops in action. These are electromechanical brakes that are able to stop a spinning table saw blade in as little as 5 milliseconds. That's enough to save your fingers. We used our industrial X-ray CT scanner to look inside both a new and a used saw stop brake in order to understand how this product works. In this video, we'll take a tour. And along the way, if you want to check these scans out for yourself, just follow the link in the description below. Let's start with a few of the basic components. The saw stop is secured to the saw's trunnion with a locking pin. The trunnion is what allows adjustments to the angle of a table saw's blade. This design includes a bent, thin metal tab inside this hole that makes contact with the PCB and verifies that the device is installed on the saw correctly. The saw stop module consists of an aluminum pawl, a spring that's inside this enclosure, and an electronics package that controls the stopping process. In its normal state, the pawl is connected to the saw stop's PCB through this stamped copper electrode. It uses spring-formed fingers to maintain contact even in an environment like the inside of a table saw, which is subject to lots of vibration and dust. This connection allows the saw stop's control circuitry to use capacitive coupling to verify that it's installed close enough to the saw blade. When the saw is on, an electric current runs through the blade, which is continuously monitored by the brake cartridge. When this current is disrupted, say when an object like a finger or a hot dog hits the blade, the digital signal processor, or DSP, releases the pawl upward. It catches the spinning blade, stopping its rotation and causing it to drop down below the table surface under its own momentum. Let's look at how that happens. In order to launch the pawl, the saw stop releases a surge of current from its capacitors into a fuse wire that holds the pawl down against the force of its spring. Fuse wires like this are typically made from nickel, chromium, or hardened steel, which are both light and strong. Using our Voyager analysis software, we can measure the diameter of this wire and find that it's less than 0.4 millimeters. That's pretty thin for something that's holding back a 150 pound spring. This uses a three to one mechanical advantage from the fulcrum point on top of the spring. That makes it possible for such a thin wire to hold back such a powerful spring. The lack of thickness isn't something to worry about. It's designed to resist both stretching and thinning over time. When the current is released from the set of capacitors, it travels between these two electrodes on top of the PCB, a distance along the wire of less than one and a half millimeters. The fuse wire is attached to a lever pin that holds the spring in place. Ridges along this pin prevent the fuse wire from slipping due to vibrations when the saw is operating. It's carefully designed to be small enough to prevent it from getting stuck on the paw link when it's released. Once the pin is released by the fuse wire, the heavy spring launches the paw above it into the saw blade. The pawl is made from aluminum. It's soft enough for the saw teeth to dig into, but strong enough to halt the blade in its tracks. You'll see two rows of small holes throughout the impact zone, as well as larger ones in the middle. These areas are collapse zones. They help absorb the blade's impact, and they save weight, which contributes to a speedy deployment. The back of the pawl has a free rotation point. These gaps are there for a reason. They allow the plastic ring and the aluminum pawl to expand and contract against each other. This accommodates thermal expansion and avoids other issues like sawdust buildup that could bind the pawl at this rotation point and prevent the device from working. Now let's take a look at what happens after the saw stop is used. Here's the actuator assembly before and after the saw stop was triggered. We see the broken thread of the fuse wire as well as the thrown locking pin and expanded spring, clear evidence that the mechanism worked exactly as intended. Here's a comparison of the new and used pawl in our Voyager analysis software. We see exactly where the blade bit into the pawl. It only took two teeth for the primary collapse zone to catch the blade, crushing the secondary collapse zone to absorb the rest of the energy. Now you've seen the clever design and operation of the saw stop. So what's next for this finger-saving device? The US Consumer Product Safety Commission determined in October 2023 that table saw injuries are preventable and began looking to manufacturers for a solution. In February of 2024, saw stop threw their hat in the ring and offered to make their initial patents public. It remains to be seen when a new law would go into effect, but if it's approved later this year, it could mandate saw stop-like safety devices on all new table saws. Industrial CT gives us a fresh look and helps us see how a limb-saving, possibly life-saving device works, and it offers a glimpse into the ingenuity of those who designed it. Follow the link in the description to take a look at the scan of the saw stop yourself, or check out these other videos to learn more about industrial CT, how it works, and how it's used. Thank you.